everybody, I hope you're well. Uh, today I will read from a book titled 10% uh, Concerning the Image Archive of a Nuclear Research Center, edited by Susanne Kriemann, Judith Mills, uh, Frederike Schaeffer, Klaus Nippet, and uh, Elke Linen-Beaver, and published by Spectre Books. In the middle of the Hartwald Forest, north of Karlsruhe, lies the Karlsruhe Institute of Technologies Campus North. Measuring two square kilometers, the campus has been a site of scientific research since the inception of the Karlsruhe Nuclear Research Center in 1956. The research reactor FR2, which was developed at the site and operated from 1963 to 1981, was the first fully functional reactor to be conceived and built in Germany. From the very beginning, activities at the KFK were documented by in-house photographers. Over the course of 50 years, their work grew into a collection of roughly 210,000 negatives that were incorporated into the KIT archives in 2014. The images, originally intended for the KFK's own purposes, had now become a public resource. Between 2017 and 2020, roughly 10% of this collection was digitized to allow wider access to the documented imagery. The images cover half a century of research and may appear as one clearly defined section within the archive. Their content, however, the depicted nuclear research, places the images within a much broader spatial and temporal continuum that will be of great concern to future generations. While KIT Archives freezes its collection to protect the photographs from decomposition, the final disposal of the KFK's material legacy in radioactive waste remains an ongoing undertaking with many essential factors still unresolved. Half-life periods range from hundreds to hundreds of thousands of years. Most of the low- and medium-level radioactive waste is in interim storage at Campus North, managed by KTE, Nuclear Waste Disposal Karlsruhe. Although the oldest reactors installed here, the FR2 and the MZFR, ceased operation in 1981 and 1984 respectively, the KTE would be concerned with dismantling the nuclear facilities for decades to come. Today, radioactive substances are still used for research purposes at Campus North. The German Repository Site Selection Act stipulates that, especially for high-level radioactive waste, optimal safety has to be guaranteed for one million years. The extended temporal dimension turns the radioactive residue itself into a material archive of nuclear research. Even if language, writing and symbols should not persist over that expense of time, future generations will be able to reconstruct human efforts in nuclear technology from those relics. From today's perspective, the imagery of the KFK collection offers a view back in time and to a nuclear euphoria that seems strange now. Of course, every engagement with archived material and every interpretation of images takes place from a certain perspective. In accordance with the character of the archive, this book opens the images to various routes of access from multiple perspectives. It juxtaposes very different methodologies with regard to archived records, as well as a broad spectrum of questions regarding its documentary nature. The approaches presented in this book look at correlations between nuclear research, its social context and specific characteristics within the represented images. 
The process that gave rise to this project originated in a collaboration between the photography faculty at the Karlsruhe University of Arts and Design and KIT archives between 2017 and 2021. Over time, a pool of collective knowledge was generated from shared research, seminars, exhibitions and discussions. The joint effort, collecting knowledge and determining what 10% of images should be selected for digitization ultimately shaped the concept of the publication 10% concerning the image archive of a nuclear research center. For the featured selection of images, 34 contributors were invited to compile a series of images according to their own respective criteria and to write an accompanying text. The contributions reflect varying interests in subject matter, different professional backgrounds, methodological approaches and personal positions. Both the texts and image selections present individual, sometimes highly subjective perspectives on nuclear research that do not always reflect the editor's position on the issue. In this manner, the publication allows for overlaps between image sequences and external points of view and internal perspectives from the KFK and its successor institution KIT. In the overall context of nuclear research, images that depict the daily routines and social interactions at the KFK stand out. They demonstrate that science, and particularly large-scale research projects, are not realized by isolated, prominent figures, but are in fact facilitated by the collective work of numerous non-scientific employees, be it in the canteen, in offices or in the plant's on-site fire brigade. While photographs of public figures and persons of contemporary history may legally be reproduced without further considerations, most other people enjoy property rights and may have the right to decide in what context their image appears. The image section of this book respects these restrictions. Some photographs are reproduced only in the form of their captions and reference numbers but do not themselves appear in print. This book not only offers a glimpse into the visual world of nuclear research, it inherently touches on discourses in photography and copyright law. Produced over a period of 50 years, the KFK's image archive also documents changes in photographic techniques and aesthetic conventions. Medial formats of the selected images include small, medium and large format photographs in black and white and in color, as well as moving images. Each of these documents presents a perspective on nuclear research with regard to technique, material, aesthetics and content. 10% is published in 2021, a year that marks the 10th anniversary of the nuclear catastrophe at Fukushima on March 2011, as well as the 35th anniversary of the Chernobyl disaster on April 26, 1986. This book, therefore, emphasizes the simultaneous existence of different temporalities. The persistence of radioactive radiation, the brevity of the photographic moment, the period of archival preservation and the temporal dimension of topical discourses and debates, and the challenge inherent in the simultaneity of these different temporalities. Since the original negatives will be frozen in perpetuity at minus 18 degrees Celsius one year after publication, reproducing the material in book form may encourage readers to reconsider the notion of perpetuity and the responsibilities it implies for technology, energy policy and the existence of various forms of life, that is, to adopt a wider ecological perspective. Unlike the archived images, the final disposal of the residue left by nuclear research does not allow for individual approaches. It will be an inevitable challenge for future generations. The degree to which disparities appear will depend on how the weight of this burden is then distributed.
The book was designed by Maurice Apic and Cecile Cobel. Ask for it at your local bookstore. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.